Um, Mayor Beamish used the wrong link to come in. Like that, like this one seems to be broadcasted and it looks extremely close to the same. Yeah. Are you on it right now? Mm -hmm. I'm here. Hello. Hey, here you are. Any trees missing? <laughs> Just the ones, uh, Council DeAndre he came and chopped down. <laughs> okay, yeah. No, not surprised. Not surprised. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. It says it's five o'clock somewhere. No, it's five minutes. Oh, is that five minutes? Okay. The timer. Five a.m. Um. So we all know what we're doing tonight. We got three public hearings going in quick order. We may well have to put one over, um, depending upon the the volume and how how quickly things proceed. No. Lindsay? Yeah. Sorry, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. Um, the three public or the three bylaws are in one public hearing. So yeah. if we don't end, they all are adjourned to another date. Oh, really? Yes. Son of a gun. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Well, let's try to get this through by seven o'clock then. Depends mm -hmm. upon how the, how many speakers want to, want to talk uh, as to whether or not we can get it done. Otherwise, we'll be we will be putting it over. I think the I think the next date is to next Tuesday if we have to put it over. That will shorten our next meeting. I'm not here next Tuesday. Just FYI. Okay. All right. Well, it's not looking too bad so far. We've only got 14 attendees of the regional district. We had 43. Yeah. Did you get, did you receive the additional information today on the correspondence that came in? Did you have a chance to look at it? There was, I think, 10 pieces of correspondence came in. Okay. okay. I saw some, I didn't. Okay. Okay, corporate officer, I'll let you be the timekeeper here. I have a watch that says half past, so. I have 529, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. That uh, sign that has a council meeting time on there, is that, oh, is that, is that for speakers? Yes. Timing speakers down. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. We'll cross our fingers that it works. Let's see what we're doing. Something new. Okay. Yeah. We have 530, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Um, we'll open this uh meeting then the public hearing and I call to order the public hearing at 5 30 p.m on Tuesday July 14 2020 for the town of Gibsons good evening and welcome to this public hearing being held electronically is authorized by ministerial order number m192 local government meetings and bylaw process COVID-19 order number three this public hearing is held to consider zoning amendment bylaw number 1065-57 to allow for cannabis production facility at 1037 Venture Way, official community plan amendment bylaw number 985-27 and zoning amendment bylaw number 1065-58 regarding secondary suites and zoning amendment bylaw number 1065-47 regarding short-term rentals. I would like to acknowledge that we are meeting on the traditional territory of the Squamish nation I will now introduce the council members present for this evening. Councillor Elyria Ladwig, Councillor Anne-Marie Diedrad, Councillor David Kroll, and Councillor Stafford Lumley. I am Mayor Bill Beamish and Chair of this evening's proceedings. 
A public hearing is a statutory requirement under the Local Government Act. A public hearing must be held after the first reading and before the third reading of an amendment to a zoning bylaw and official community plan. All persons who believe their interests are affected by the proposed bylaw amendments shall be given an opportunity to be heard on the matters contained in the proposed amendments or to present their written submissions to the corporate officer before tonight's hearing is adjourned. Under the Local Government Act, the chair of a public hearing is entitled to make procedural rules for the conduct of the public hearing. For this public hearing, we'll use the following protocol. Persons wishing to speak during this public hearing are invited to use the raise hand feature by clicking on the hand icon found at the bottom of your screen. The media administrator will then add you to the speaker's list and you will be able to unmute and turn on your video when it is your time to speak. Please identify yourself clearly, stating your name and residential address before beginning to address council. Speakers are allowed up to five minutes to make their presentation and may not transfer all or part of their allotted time to another speaker. Members of council are present to hear your submissions and not to answer your questions or debate the bearings of the bylaw under consideration. Council members may ask for clarification from members of the public after their submissions, and I would ask them to, to do that through me as well. Persons wishing to speak a second time may do so only after all other persons wishing to speak have been provided the opportunity to speak for a first time. Persons speaking for a second time will be limited to three minutes. A written submission may be submitted via email to clerk at gibsons.ca in lieu of speaking, provided it is received prior, prior to the close of the public hearing. All written submissions will be circulated to council and will become part of the public record. I will now introduce Katie Thomas, a planner who will introduce the proposed zoning amendment bylaw for cannabis production at 1037 Venture Way. Thank you, Mayor Beanish. Um, a zoning bylaw amendment was applied for by the property owner at 1037 Venture Way to permit a cannabis production facility on the site. The subject property is designated Service Commercial Business Centre in the OCP and is zoned Light Industrial Zone 1. The subject property is approximately 700 square metres and the property owner intends to apply for a micro cultivation licence from Health Canada which limits the growing area to 200 square meters. The proposed zoning amendment looks to provide a site specific provision to the I-1 zone to permit a cannabis production facility at 1037 Venture Way. The I-1 zone only permits use within a building and therefore when the property owner intends to construct a building, a form and character development permit number six would be required. The bylaw was given first and second readings on June 26th, 22nd, uh, 2020. Resolution to hold a public hearing today was adopted by council on June 26th, 2020. And notice of public hearing was advertised in the Coast Reporter on July 3rd and 10th, 2020. Thank you. Um... I will now ask the corporate officer, Lindy Griss, to note and present any information, any written submissions received to date regarding cannabis production at 1037 Venture Way. Thank you, Mayor Beamish. There were two written submissions received in opposition to the zoning amendment bylaw regarding cannabis production at 1037 Venture Way prior to the public hearing. Thank you. And council has received those two notice uh, um, submissions. Yes, they were in the agenda package. Uh, the last one was published this afternoon. Thank you. Um, we will now seek public input. Is there anyone wishing to speak for or against proposed bylaw for cannabis production at 1037 Venture Way? I'm not seeing any raised hands, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. I'll ask a second time, is there anyone wishing to speak for or against the proposed bylaw for cannabis production at 1037 Venture Way? 
Again, no raised hands, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. And I'll ask a third and final time, is there anyone wishing to speak for or against the proposed bylaw for cannabis production at 1037 Venture Way? And once more, there are no raised hands, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on then to um, the next bylaw. And once uh, again, we'll invite uh, Katie Thomas, the planner, to introduce proposed uh, and um, and proposed official community plan and zoning amendment bylaws regarding secondary suites. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. I have a short presentation. Yep. I'm just sharing my screen now. Okay. Uh, a secondary suite is an accessory dwelling unit within a home used for either um, long or short-term rental purposes. A secondary suite cannot be sold separate separately from the main unit. Now the um, BC Building Code now allows for secondary suites to be in duplexes and townhouses as long as there's a vertical fire separation from the foundation to the roof separating each single um, real estate entity. And this is shown on the diagram. So each real estate secondary suite is outlined in the blue box. The zoning amendment permits uh, secondary suites in more housing types. And with this change, staff have also included um, lock-off suites to apartment units. And this would provide an opportunity for a part, an apartment unit to have an accessory dwelling, a rental dwelling unit within it. The main difference between a secondary suite and a lock-off suite is that where they are permitted. A, a secondary suite would be permitted in a single family dwelling, a duplex or a townhouse, and lock-off units would be permitted in um, apartment units. It was determined that the principal dwelling unit, i.e. the single family dwelling, townhouse or apartment unit, should be seen as one unit regardless of whether it includes a separate suite for rental accommodation. OCP Amendment Bylaw number 985-27 provides clarification under Table 5-1 that secondary suites and lock-off suites do not count towards the units per hectare in the OCP with the following text. Secondary suites and lock-off suites do not count towards units per hectare. Zoning Amendment 1065-58 proposes a number of updates and additions. These include updating four existing definitions to, allow, uh, to align with other town bylaws and the addition of three new definitions. A def definition was added for lock-off suite and primary dwelling unit and principal dwelling unit were added to provide a method for clarifying which dwelling unit on a property is the main dwelling unit and which is the accessory unit. A flexible requirement for one parking suite on site was added for both secondary suites and to lock-off suites. Um, currently, there are no on-site parking um, is currently required. The zoning amendment provide, uh, proposes to add wording under Part 8 general regulations to enable townhouse units to include secondary suites and apartments to uh, include lock-off suites without these accessory dwelling units affecting the ma overall maximum density of the principal use. So the official community plan bylaw and the zoning bylaw amendments were given first and second readings on June 24th, 2020. Resolution to hold a public hearing today was adopted by council on June 24th, 2020. And notice of public hearing was advertised in the Coast Reporter on July 3rd and 10th, 2020. So that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, I will now ask the corporate officer, Lindsay Griss, to note and present any written submissions received to date regarding the proposed official community plan amendment and zoning amendment bylaws regarding secondary suites. Thank you, Mayor Beamish. There was one written submission received in opposition to the proposed official community plan and zoning amendment bylaw regarding secondary suites prior to the public hearing. Thank you. And council has received that. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, they were in the agenda package published this afternoon. Thank you very much. Um, 
I will now ask um, um, or seek public input. Is there anyone wishing to speak for or against proposed bylaw for secondary suites? And Mr. Mayor, I do have uh, a raised hand. If you just give me one moment. Thank you. Dave Sabard, yeah, yeah. Welcome. You you may speak to council now. Thank you. Okay, good. I just wanted to say that I think that bylaw changes that make suites and homes, or suites anywhere for that matter, are a good change. And I think it shows that you guys are, you know, wanting to play ball and wanting to have a good change for uh, long term housing here. I think that's a positive thing. I'm someone that's a uh, um, a landlord. I have five five units that I rent to uh, to people long term. And I think that anything we can do to make it easier to be a landlord should be a welcome thing. I know that if you choose to do it the right way and you have permitted suites uh, and declare them as legal, historically anyway, you're penalized quite heavily. And I would sort of like uh, maybe some amendments to be made, if any, to make it easier for people to have suites in their homes and, uh, and do their part to contribute for housing here. I know for instance, I, I made the mistake of declaring my suite on Crucial Road when I lived there and my taxes went up and my garbage collection went up and well, basically, I just I felt like I was getting penalized unfairly for for uh, you know providing someone with a home. So um, I think it's good. Any changes we can make to uh, to have more long term housing is a positive thing. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Mr. Safari. I'll ask a second time. Is there anyone wishing to speak for or against the proposed bylaw for secondary suites? Sorry, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I do have a second uh, raised hand. Just one moment. Yep. Hello. Good afternoon. Eric, can you hear me? Well, yes, we can hear you. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. Um, yeah, my name is Eric Seely. Um, I am a uh, tenant at uh, 810 North Road in Gibsons. Um, and I want to say that I also support uh, these amendments. I believe that we are facing um, a long-term housing crisis in this community, which will continue and that any way that we can allow homeowners to make space in their homes for people is, is a welcome change. And uh, I believe that's a good idea. So I also support it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Seeley. Corporate officer, are they, is there, I'll ask a third time now, a third and final time. Is there anyone wishing to speak for or against proposed bylaw for secondary suites? And we have one more, Mr. Mayor. Deborah Mowbray, you're still muted. Hi, guys. Hi, welcome. Hi, and sorry, I was I was just running into the room. So um, I I I I'm going to speak to the whole thing just briefly, if I can. Um, and I guess I wear different hats in that I'm a resident, and 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 so I guess I'm I'm jumping a little bit too soon if we're talking about the secondary suites because I'm just talking about short-term rentals as a whole. Secondary suites is what we're talking about. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. So, um, no, I'm just going to opt out and I'll, I'll come back into the conversation. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. So I will ask again, just so there's no confusion. Is there anybody wishing to speak against for or against proposed bylaw for secondary suites? I'm not seeing any raised hands, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Uh, 
And thank you very much. That was actually four times I asked. So we'll we'll carry on next to the uh, next bylaw. And um, at this time, I'll invite Leslie Ann Stats, our director of planning, to introduce the proposed zoning amendment bylaw regarding short-term rentals. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm just going to share my screen and get the presentation up. Can everybody see that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So this is a town led initiative to develop regulations to allow short term rentals with the guiding principles of supporting the local economy, providing supplemental income or mortgage support, providing clarity for operators who wish to operate responsibly, maintaining neighborhood character and keeping hosts on site. So this public hearing is specifically for zoning amendment bylaw 1065 47 2020 and to support that zoning amendment we are also I'll also summarize the business license and enforcement bylaw amendments. So what is currently allowed right now uh, we allow a bed and breakfast in some residential zones. Bed and breakfast is defined as a boarding use intended for the short term accommodation and provisions of a morning meal to tourists and transient members of the public conducted by a resident of or members of a family resident in the dwelling to which the bed and breakfast use is accessory. So essentially a bed and breakfast is a boarding use for tourists operated by a resident in a dwelling and providing breakfast. The conditions of use is one parking space per sleeping unit it's only allowed in a single family dwelling, so not allowed in a duplex townhouse apartment or secondary suites, and it's not permitted in conjunction with a home occupation. Those are the current regulations. What is being proposed? So what we're proposing in this amendment is essentially deleting bed and breakfast, the definition, and introducing a new definition, which is called short-term rental accommodation. Um, and the definition of short term rental accommodation means the use of a furnished dwelling unit or sleeping unit for the provision of sleeping accommodation for periods of less than 30 consecutive days for transient visitors. So what this does is it no longer requires the operator to provide breakfast. So the new zoning updates introduce um, new and updated definitions. So we've introduced a definition of bedroom. We define what a cooking facility is. A dwelling unit has been updated. Home occupation has been updated. Um, Short-term rental accommodation is new. Sleeping unit has been updated. And we've also updated tourist accommodation. Tourist accommodation is a broader definition, which is essentially a hotel. So the home occupation also is up, the home occupation section of the bylaw is also updated to allow two home, ocu home occupations in conjunction with one another. Currently the bylaw doesn't allow a bed and breakfast with a home occupation or a secondary suite with a home occupation. So what we're doing is we're, we're updating that section. We would also be deleting the definition of boarding use, which is essentially having a roommate um, and bed and breakfast. So the new zoning requirements um, for short-term rentals are that short-term rental accommodation shall be administered by a person who lives on the property full-time and that person must be present on the property during guest stays. So that essentially is saying the operator must be living on the property. The conditions include short-term rentals would be allowed in a broader range of housing types so single family dwellings, sleeping units, secondary suites, garden suites, duplexes, three family dwellings, townhouses, and apartment buildings only if the building is located in a zone that allows tourist accommodation. The parking requirements are one parking space for every two bedrooms or sleeping units can only occupy one dwelling unit or sleeping unit per property for the duration of a guest stay. So if a property has a duplex and a garden suite, only one half of the duplex or the garden suite could be rented for a short-term rental. You couldn't rent off, you couldn't rent more than one dwelling unit. 
there must they must have a valid business license displayed on the property and there would be an annual business license fee of two hundred dollars and then of course we've introduced some enforcement penalties so this is just a short summary of the short of the business license requirements essentially we have introduced some safety measures that would be required and the safety measures are focused around fire safety. So every short-term rental would have to put in a smoke alarm, um, a carbon monoxide alarm, there'd have to be a fire extinguisher, a fire safety plan, and um, unobstructed access to the bedroom doors and windows. The terms and conditions of the business license are that an operator must reside on site and will be available during all guest stays. Not more than one guest suite can be used for a short-term rental accommodation on a property at a time. Um, they will submit a parking plan with the application and include a business license number and all advertising for short-term rental accommodation. The business license and operator's name, phone number and email address must be displayed in a prominent location on the property. And there will be a written record of guest names and contact information and the property owner would have insurance or the, or the short-term rental operator would have insurance. The enforcement penalties include, um, well, basically this slide shows all the enforcement penalties that are being introduced, which start, most of them start at $200 per penalty. So if there are multiple offenses, then there would be multiple tickets. So the penalties include not complying with the terms and conditions for short-term rental, for, for operators of short-term rentals, refusing entry for an inspection by a town or fire department representative, listing or advertising a short-term rental that exceeds approved sleeping unit count on a business license, operating contrary to zoning restrictions, operating without a principal resident on the property, occupying a short-term rental in more than one unit on the property, operating without a business license or not meeting parking requirements. So those are the additional bylaw amendments that would be supporting the zoning amendment. In terms of the timeline on June 24th, 2020, council gave the zoning amendment bylaw first and second readings. And on June 24th, council also resolved to hold this public hearing today. On July 3rd and July 10th, the notice of public hearing was advertised in the Coast Reporter. So following this public hearing, Council will consider a third reading and then a final fourth reading would adopt or defeat the bylaws. Thank you. Thank you very much, the Director of Planning. Um, I will now ask the Corporate Officer, Lindsay Griss, to note and present any written submissions received to date regarding the proposed amendments to the zoning bylaw regarding short-term rentals. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, there were four written submissions received in favor, 17 in opposition, and two neutral submissions regarding short-term rentals prior to the public hearing. Thank you. And has council received all of those submissions? Uh, yes, they have, Mr. Mayor, in the agenda update this afternoon. And as noted, individuals may choose to forward written submissions via email to clerk at gibsons.ca up to the close of this hearing. Those submissions will be collated at adjournment and added to the agenda for consideration. Thank you very much. Uh, we will now seek public input. Is there anyone wishing to speak for or against the proposed bylaw for short-term rentals? Yes, Mr. Mayor, we have a number. Thank you. The first name I see is Dave Savard. Hey guys. Yeah. You're back. Welcome. On. Yeah, me again. Okay. First thing I got to say is I just don't think there's any way that those numbers are correct. Four written submissions by today. I personally know like 20 people that have emailed those in. So that doesn't seem right to me. And the second thing I want to say is obviously I'm against the bylaws, but I think having this meeting in the middle of summer when a ton of the people that are affected by this and aren't even present on the coast. I just don't think it's the best thing. I think we should push it off till fall till more people are here and we can actually get a fair shake at this. That's just my opinion. We'll see what other people have to say. Third point I wanna make is 
I don't think the short-term rentals and the few short-term rentals in town here that are the, you know, year after year problem houses, I don't think it's a bylaw issue at this point. I think what it is is a bylaw enforcement issue. We have bylaws in place already in this town for noise and for parking, excess traffic. We've got a bylaw for everything. And I think we're going to hear tonight how overwhelmed our bylaw department already is. We do not need more bylaws. We need to enforce the bylaws we already have. That should be a simple point. Another point I want to make is I think that the reason why a town this small has a bylaw officer as overwhelmed as she is, we got to say, first of all, hats off to Sue. She does a tremendous job. I think we can all agree on that. But for her to be as overwhelmed as she is, that tells me that people aren't doing a good enough job trying to take care of a problem themselves. And by that, I'm going to reference my children who are seven and five right now. And they're going through the phase of life when they complain and tattle about every single little thing the other person does. And we're trying to educate them to be able to work towards solving their own problems. As a landlord, I solve basically a dozen bylaw issues every single week. I'm not bragging. It's just a fact. I'm telling people not to park in someone else's parking spot. I'm telling someone to pick up their dog crap off the lawn. I'm telling another person to turn their music down. These are things that are all easy to take care of. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you guys that where I live is 455 South Fletcher Road in Gibson's, right across from Town Hall, big gray fourplex, yellow doors. I'm going to give an example. Hi, everyone. My name's Dave. I live at 455 South Fletcher Road. And if you have a dog that walks by and craps on my lawn, can you please pick it up? I'm tired of that crap exploding in my face every time I weed whack. There. It's that simple. I literally just solved the bylaw problem. Quit calling Sue with all your ridiculous problems. Let's be adults. Let's be adults. If you have a party house next to you, whether it's an Airbnb or whether it's just a person that lives there all the time and is living in their own backyard, ask them to turn it down. Not an issue. If there's somebody parking in your driveway, politely ask them to move. Quit calling bylaw for ridiculous things. There's just no way she should be as overwhelmed as she is. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Savard. And uh, I would remind everybody when they uh, come online to please state your name and your address, please. Is it Blake McLeod? Still muted, muted, Mr. McLeod. I'm going to start again. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm Blake McLeod. I live at 1014 Venture Way in Upper Gibsons. There seems to be some uh, ambiguity in the definition of who is required to be on site for a short-term rental to manage it and take care of any problems that arise. So I wonder if I could ask the director of planning for some clarification on that. Does it have to be, for instance, the person that applies for the license, does it have to be someone who is a building owner and resident, or could it be a resident that has ac accepted the responsibility for that duty on an ongoing basis and is predictably and reliably on site uh, while guests are staying on the in the building or in the home? Thank you. Before the director of planning responds, I'll refer you to the bylaw itself, section 8.7, subsection 1. Uh, Short-term rental accommodation shall be administered by a person who lives on the property full-time, and that person must be present on the property during guest stays. It does not refer to owner. Yeah, okay, great. Thank you. And um, I just wanted to uh, respond a little bit to the last comment in that in my opinion, not everybody has uh, what it takes to confront other people and bylaw officers and enforcement is very important for those folks. That's it for me. Thank you. And uh, did you express a view of support or opposition? I, uh, I would express a view of support. Thank you. Next, Mr. Martin DeRosiers. Welcome, you're still muted and please identify yourself and your address.
There you. we go. There yeah. we go. Yeah, welcome. Thank you. It's Martin DeRosier here uh, from Beachcomber Coffee, 264 Gower Point Road in Gibsons. Um, I did email this in as well, but I figured I'd also call in and, and kind of uh, read it out loud as well. I wrote some notes, so I'm just going to read off what I've wrote, written down here. I believe uh, I just want to state to start, uh, I'm, I'm opposed specifically to the requirement to have an owner on site 24 seven. Um, I believe the future of travel and tourism is through Airbnb and people want to find unique accommodations. And I feel like that adds to the lure of the destination. Um, Town of Gibsons right now isn't exactly known for its hotel options. I think having a diverse pool of Airbnb rentals is a positive. Um, as an avid Airbnb user myself and, you know, through my social circle, I always look for places that do not have an owner on site for various reasons, whether it be privacy. And that's very common. And that's, you know, looking at other municipalities, that's, you know, you can find a plethora of spaces that don't have the owner on site, but the, the owner is, you know, a local that is a quick, you know, three minute drive away. Um, you know, I think ultimately, I don't, I don't want to just complain about what I see as the negatives. I think, you know, I wanted to throw a few things out there that I would like uh, the mayor and council to consider, you know, when reviewing these, all the comments and all the feedback. You know, I think instead of just eliminating some of these standalone Airbnb units, um, you know, I think there's an opportunity for the town to even take a small percentage of, of rental revenue. I think a lot of operators are will, willing to forego a percentage of revenue, which could create a long term recurring revenue stream for the town. Um, I do think as a local resident, you know, I grew up in Gibsons, I live in Gibsons, I have two businesses in Gibsons, um, I think making an exception for local residents that live within close proximity to the rental should be considered, um, you know, or consider a local property manager that should be documented as part of the licensing process. Um, you know, potentially if the, if the operator isn't a local, make the fees double or triple to, to you know, license an Airbnb. Um, I know other municipalities have created a three strike system to weed out the bad apples. So that's something that I would, you know, consider just, you know, there, there are ways to, to eliminate, um, you know, Airbnbs that are problematic. Uh, what else do I have here? Um, I would like to also consider the fact that there are many businesses, property management, trades, cleaning businesses that have basically formed to service the Airbnb ecosystem in Gibsons. And I think, you know, these, these businesses are already hurting due to the pandemic and further changes are, you know, potentially gonna kick them while they're already down. Um, you know, I think there's, there's opportunity to consider units that are anomalies, um, such as the unit we operate above Beachcomber Coffee and Lord Gibsons. We have no neighbors. We have no adjacent residential properties. We are zoned for commercial. We have staff on site 12 hours a day, seven days a week, and we've never had a complaint with the town. We have 85 reviews on Airbnb that are all five star, and every single guest asks us where to eat, where to visit, and contribute significantly to the local economy. Uh, we've had many locals using our space when their family's visiting, when they're moving. We've had people with floods that have had to find a space short notice. Uh, we've had lots of trades stay with us due to the lack of vacancy in hotels. Uh, you know, we have tourism operators that are using our space for media and influencers. So I think there's, there's some unique standalone properties that I think are impacted by these broad sweeping changes. So I think there's a lot of things I, I urge you to consider. And I did email all these points in as well for you to review. So thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Mr. Drozier. And just uh, if I could ask a question to the director of planning, and that would be that uh, is a um, standalone unit in a commercial zone um treated similar to a residential unit thank you mr mayor uh yes yeah, so in an, in commercial zones apartments are allowed above commercial uses and in some commercial zones tourist accommodation is allowed and in some some commercial zones tourist accommodation is not allowed so um in in his particular property tourist accommodation is not a permitted use and therefore um, short-term rentals are not allowed in apartment units as the bylaw is written right now. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Okay, further questions? Sean Rathbone.
Sorry about that. It's uh, right. you know, kick you up when, when you select. So um, thank you for taking our questions. And um, so my name is Sean Rathbone. Uh, it's 1774 Ocean Esplanade. Um, many of the topics that I, I, I oppose the uh, the Bible. Um, many of the, the topics that have been already been uh, brought forward, I concur with uh, wholeheartedly. Specifically, uh, it's the operator that living on the premise the entire time, 24-7. I, I just, I'm, I'm not familiar with the need for that. Um, more importantly, it's, I would never want to stay where the owner is. I want to bring my family to, to that place. I want to have my own time. If it's a Christmas time, I want to be with my own family and, and I don't need to be chaperoned when I, I go to a place. So um, we offer that for guests that come and stay at our place. Uh, we offer them their kids, their, their pets to come and stay. And I encourage the, 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 the people that are opposed to, to this, uh, sorry, that are for this, um, to go on and read some of the reviews, especially the five-star reviews. Uh, we have a five-star rating, an excellent rating, but go in and read the actual reviews. And what you will find is many of the comments that have already been raised is about how great the city was, how informative everything was that, that was um, communicated to the people. The fact of uh, where the recycling or where to go and eat and encourage all of those reviews that you'll gain so much knowledge about how much great work is being done and not concentrate on, uh, on the bad apples. Um, I want to also say that, as someone mentioned it earlier, I know personally I've invested $120,000 last year of expenses. This is gardening expenses, people to come and clean the property, uh, laundry expenses, um, tree felling expenses, um, everything to do with maintaining and all of that, all of that um, economy is driven within Gibson. It's not coming with outside of the borders of Gibson. It's all inside of Gibson, including purchasing our house, which we did about two years ago with the understanding that the only way we could afford it was to help um, get some rental income. Now that agent that sold us the house, sold us as on the idea of the, the fact that we could make this only a, a retirement home, but also a place of income. And I think that a lot of real estate agents are also harboring that dream to people that are buying um, you know, places in Gibsons. Mainly with the intent, my intent is to retire in Gibsons. I would love to retire in Gibsons. I just can't afford to retire now at that place. Um, what else do I have? I think, um, you know, losing short-term rental in Gibson, you're gonna lose tourism. There is no other avenue that provides uh, Gibsons with the, uh, the quality of, of, of accommodation and uh, vacationing that the high class short term rentals provide. There is simply no way else in, in Gibsons that can provide that. Um, but there are, I want to say that there are a lot of good things in the bylaws, you know, the, the fees. Um, uh, you know, if it's a three strike rule and all of those conditions, but allow people the freedom to, to uh, have the ability to earn some income while offering a great vacation experience and great tourism in that, in that area. So that's my comments and thank you again for, for listening to. Thank you, Mr. Rathbone. Megan McLean. Welcome. You're not muted, but we can't hear you. Can't hear you, Megan, I'm sorry, I can see you. Now you're muted. Okay, now you're unmuted. I can't hear you. Any corporate officer, do you have any suggestions uh, for Megan? Do you want to work with her? 
Um, Megan, I can suggest that down to the bottom left where it says mute, there's a little arrow. If you click that, it will let you uh, select your uh, speaker. Sometimes it's not set to the computer. No, I'm not hearing you again. Mr. Mayor, I can advise Megan that if she would like to submit an email to clerk at gibsons.ca, I can read it out by the end of the meeting. Okay. Megan, are you able to do that or even go on comments uh, at the bottom? Uh, there, the chat is not working, Mr. Mayor. The chat's not working. Okay. So if you could send an email uh, to the clerk at gibsons.ca, please. Thank you. Thank you. Eric Seeley. Hello. Yes, you got you. Welcome. Hello. Thank you. Um, so again, Eric Seeley, 810 North Road. Um, I wanted to voice some support for this, and I mainly wanted to do so because I wanted to draw, you know, to attention the point about our local economy, our tourism industry, is that it relies on young workers, precarious workers, our local economy, you know, it, it relies on seniors, it relies on people with fixed incomes. We have to be keeping in mind that when we are making, you know, money or making profits off of our investments, that we can't be doing so at the absolute detriment to the rest of us. I mean, this, this is just a thing that, you know, our community is so livable and so valuable to so many people that we've got now people who can rush in, who can buy property, not live here, and then rent it out on a short-term basis. And then there's nowhere to, to rent if you are a, you know, a person, like my wife and I, we have an expecting child now, you know, she's seven months pregnant. And we make, you know, between the two of us, we make about $100,000 a year. And we're very lucky to, you know, be in a place that we can rent that's stable. But I mean, the place is getting older. It's getting harder to buy. It's getting harder to, to rent because prices are going up so much. And the availability of, of places is, is disappearing. And a lot of that has to do with the appeal of short-term rentals. And, and the investment that you can make off of it. So I am very sympathetic to the people who say, you know, the rules are changing. It affects the way that we, you know, do our business. Um, I don't know what the solution is for that long time, but I just recognize that we have to also be fair to one another and be, and be fair to our community and, and allow it to grow in a way that um, ultimately looks at the long term. So that's just my point. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Seeley. Manford Schultz. You're still muted, Mr. Schultz. Hey, how's hey. that? Got you now. Thank you. I'm, I'm here with uh, my wife, Carol McDermott, and myself. Hello. We're at uh, 396 Skyline Drive. And um, uh, we've, um, I, I did send in a proposal, so did, uh, so did Carol, um, because we've been in the business been well over 20 years in Vancouver, and uh, with starting off with bed and breakfast and, and then going to uh, short-term rentals and uh, uh, we have a building that has seven seven suites. And anyway, so we have a lot of experience in the business. And I must say that, first of all, we're very much for uh, having short-term rentals. Um, it's, it is obviously from an economic standpoint for the community, it's, it's superb. Uh, I would certainly encourage that uh, MRDT is being charged as well as uh, PST. And for those people who make enough money, GST, which is uh, something that we do and, and uh, we think it's a good thing. <clears throat> the town needs the money. Um, it's a good revenue source. And uh, so from a 
an economic standpoint, it's, it's definitely a good thing. The, um, what I don't understand here is uh, living, living on the premise by the owner or a representative. Um, and uh, by, by putting that into the bylaw, I think there's a problem with that because there are lots of little one bedroom places, whether they're cottages, or they're you know uh, sleeping sleeping um, shacks, whatever they can be charming and uh, they could be rented out by the owner who may only be here a month or two, and um, you know they're now going to be excluded from that and and I don't think that that makes any sense. And the one fellow said um, that really when I when I stay in a bed and breakfast or I stay in, in a short-term rental place or an Airbnb, um, I don't wanna have people around there. That's, uh, that's not why I'm going there. Um, and so I find that, that, and, and that that's a policing thing that is being placed in there, which I think is, is um, certainly a, a, a condition that, that I think will, will make it very difficult for, for most people, not only the visitors, but also for the owners. Um, I think there, there are other ways to, to do that. So. I have something to say as well. And I think that having a short-term rental, we actually do not have a short-term rental in Gibsons. So we are on both sides of the fence. I think the idea that by having short-term rentals, you eliminate long-term rentals for locals is inaccurate. A lot of people don't want someone else in their house full time. In our situation, we have four daughters with families, so we have them come and stay with us when it's convenient for them and convenient for us. When we have too many people, then we go to a short-term rental. The person who owns the short-term rental could quite possibly have the same situation where they keep the extra accommodation for their family. And when their family's not here, they earn extra income. I think the town of Gibsons is in dire need of further income. And I think charging the MRDT to Airbnb owners is a great idea. And if they earn enough money, the GST and the PST, um, it's a, a great, it's an easy revenue stream for the town. The argument that Airbnb people um, have wild parties and wreck the house is, of course, it happens on occasion, but generally speaking, we could live next door to somebody who has a wild party every Saturday night, as we do in Vancouver. So I, I don't really buy into that argument. The one statement I would like to make is, it's the 21st century, it's 2020, the year 2020, and Airbnb and short-term rentals are not going away. We have this beautiful town with merchants that are struggling since the COVID incident. We need to support them by having more tourism coming. And I think that short-term rentals are definitely the way to go. If you could eliminate the person living in the property, which I think is inaccurate because I don't want a stranger around when I have my family with me. If you could somehow have somebody, a property manager, greet the person, tell them the rules, and leave it at that. I think the on a slightly different um, subject, the one fellow that said our bylaw enforcement um, agent, Sue, is a wonderful person. She does a great job, but- Draw your attention to the time, please. Uh, thanks, okay, that's, thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Well, while you're, while you're still there, please, so I'd just like to clarify one thing, and I'll ask our director of planning. Uh, the bylaw, I believe, provides that the the owner or operator of short-term rental be on the property, not necessarily in the same dwelling unit. In other words, your reference to having a cottage uh, at, on a property uh, could be uh, rented out as a short-term rental, or the owner of the property could live in the cottage and rent out a house as a short-term rental. Is that my understanding, Director Planning? Yes, Mr. Mayor, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's not necessarily that they live in the same unit. It's it, it, they have to be on the same property. So there are many properties that have that have uh, cottages or uh, carriage houses on them that would be right. eligible. Yeah. Thank you for that clarification. Thank you. Yeah. So I think we're out of time. I'd, I'd like if I do I have a few more seconds? 
No, I'm sorry. You're out of time, Mr. Schultz. Okay. Thank, right. you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Next, please. And and to Mr. Schultz, at the end, uh, after we've gone through everything, you may come back for another three minutes. Uh, Megan McLean, are you? Hey. With us? There you are. Thank you. <laughs> can you hear me now? <laughs> hear you now yes. Awesome. Um, let's see if I can form a couple sentences in between uh, him being angry. So uh, we have um, we did write a email um, a couple times actually. Um, so we will be on record that way. Uh, we have a short term rental um, in Laura Gibson's and um, we've been a resident um, of Gibson's for about four years now. We have, um, I think over 200 positive ratings. Um, and I just kind of want to start off with one of the quotes from one of our ratings, um, one of our people in February. Uh, so they say, uh, our second time staying here was even better than our first. Such a gem of the place, gem of a place. Uh, with so many great touches in a beautiful location. We sampled the many restaurants and stores in Lower Gibson's, including some great specialty food shops in the Gibson's public market. So um, we are obviously, we're, we're not in support of, of the bylaws. We are in support of pieces of it. Um, I have a big safety focus, um, both in my kind of career as well as just in, in general. So we already meet um, a lot of the proposed uh, pieces around having fire extinguishers, having, having a fire safety plan, that sort of thing. Um, but what we uh, do have issue with is the being on site 100% um, of the time. And the reason for that is uh, my husband, unfortunately, works in the city and he has a job that uh, wouldn't really exist on the coast. So because of that, um, we aren't there 100% of the time. Um, and especially with our seven month old, uh, our Airbnb guests, we right now um, prefer not to be there. Um, however, we do give them our contact as well as uh, several people um, that are 100% on the coast. So for us, um, we are definitely in support of having um, local, I mean, we are, uh, it is our primary residence, but local at the time um, contact information. Um, in response to uh, if, you know, are we taking away local uh, other people staying or providing um, accommodation for others? Uh, we aren't. Um, similar to the last speaker, when we have family or friends that come to visit us, they stay um, in the Airbnb. And so we wouldn't be able to rent it out full time. Um, so it's not a straight kind of uh, switch over for that reason, um, because we do really like having our family and friends coming and visiting us in Gibsons. And then on the party side, um, we are in constant contact with our neighbors. They understand that we have an Airbnb. We check in with them um, to make sure that they're doing okay with uh, how things are being run and if they have any issues. And uh, we've had the same neighbors pretty much the whole time we've been operating and uh, we haven't had any complaints. Um, we do have a smaller Airbnb. However, the reason we moved to Gibson's was uh, we came to Gibson's on my husband's 30th birthday and we uh, were lucky enough to rent a whole house um, with some of our friends. And honestly, we wouldn't have rented a, a, a bunch of hotel rooms. It was, we needed to have a house. Um, and we, you know, weren't party animals. We had a, a great time in Gibson's and that's really what sold us on the coast was that weekend um, a number of years ago. So yeah, in, in summary, we definitely are for um, some bylaw changes because we think that, you know, we want to make sure that the places are safe. Um, <laughs> he's uh, apparently <laughs> Okay, so, um, and then we're also definitely for um, charging a higher business licensing fee, as well as um, any applicable taxes. Um, that is all good with us. That's Thank all. You.
And you didn't mention where you live, uh, Megan. Oh, oh, sorry, uh, 633 Gower Point Road. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much too. Thank you. Brett Beadle. There you are. I see you. You're on mute still. Still muted. Brett, I'm sorry, you're still muted. Better now? That's better now. I got you. All right. uh, I'm calling in from Roberts Creek. Um, my partner and I manage a short-term rental management business. So we manage uh, listings on the coast. Uh, some residents do live here full-time. Others live here part-time. Um, so I just wanted to share uh, kind of our experience and, and, and um, our viewpoint on this. And I think that uh, there's a few things that <clears throat> we just want to touch on, I guess. And some of those are statistics, which are somewhat lacking in terms of when we've talked to our friends about this and some of them operate short-term rentals or some of them just enjoy staying at them. They'd like to know a little bit more in terms of how these short-term rentals do actually affect our local economy and our local communities. And I think that what we're asking for is to try and to get some more numbers here in terms of the conversations that are happening about party houses or about taking away from long-term rentals and that kind of thing. And, and those are still hard to find. I've talked to Paul um, came on, I guess, from the Sunshine Coast Tourism. And he had a few numbers, but some of them were, he's still trying to nail things down from what I was told in our conversation. One of the ones that I did find from him was that in terms of room revenue on the Sunshine Coast in 2019, more than $20 million was achieved for the first time. Short-term rentals added another $8 million to the overall room revenue on the Sunshine Coast. So we're looking at 40 to 45% of that hotel tax or whatever is coming from short-term rentals at this time. That gives us some numbers to kind of assume and play with. Um, the other thing that I think people have touched on is the rooms and the lack of hotel accommodations here. There hasn't been a new hotel built here for over 15 years. Obviously, the population has grown. The population surrounding the Sunshine Coast has grown substantially. We're having a lot more visitors come here. And the proposed bylaws would turn those people away. And, and I think that that's a mistake. We don't want to send some of our visitors who enjoy coming here and visiting to other jurisdictions that have the appropriate accommoda accommodations for them. So friends of ours who love to visit from Vancouver but have multiple kids who don't want to be in a basement suite or have someone who's right next to them would choose to vacation in the Okanagan or on the Vancouver Island or one of the other places that are available to them. Um, so what we're talking about here I think is really enforcement. Enforcement is the key. Um, so the position would be let's have an operator tax, an annual tax or an annual charge that goes into paying a bylaw officer or someone to enforce the bylaws and as far as party houses and these kind of complaints have come about I don't know what the actual numbers are I'm hoping that you guys do but anecdotally I hear that they're less than 10 I think in in the last calendar year maybe four or five so let's try and get those numbers dialed down so that we can have an actual idea of how much these problems or issues actually do um, affect our community um, so I just wanted to speak to a couple of comments from, we started a petition basically against these bylaws between Gibson's and the SCRD. And I think some of them really touch on, you know, how this affects local people and our visitors. So one was, we have a young family who lived on the Sunshine Coast, who has lived on the Sunshine Coast for three years. Short-term rentals make the Sunshine Coast a wonderful place to live and invest in the local economy. As a homeowner who does not have a short-term rental, I fully support short-term rentals as they are a key piece of infrastructure to support the coast community, supporting a local economy through these tough times, recession, and investing in the future of a world-class destination. 
Another one says, we are a family of five that regularly visits the Sunshine Coast for vacations. STRs are really the only suitable accommodation available for us on the coast for our family. Hotel rooms, suites, et cetera, aren't comfortable for all of us and we would travel elsewhere if STRs are not an option. So, I mean, I think that no one here is saying that it needs to be a free for all, but let's have a nuanced discussion on how this is actually affect, is affecting the community and how we can enforce the negative aspects while embracing the positive effects on our local economy. And, and, and that's all we're asking for. And I think that that's a reasonable approach. Thank you very much, Mr. Beadle. And you just cut it right on time. Thank you. 10 seconds. Yeah, you can back and speak a second time if you choose. So cool. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, there are two more raised hands. However, they are uh, people who've already spoken, so would be going to a second round. So I would suggest at this time to maybe call once more for first time speakers. Okay, I will do that. Um, at, uh, is there anybody wishing to speak uh, to short term rentals for a first time? And I have one more. Thank you. Des Delaney. Here we go. Can you hear me now? Yes, welcome. Great. Um, I actually, I had registered to speak, so I'm not sure why I wasn't on the list. I had a confirmation today. Okay. Um, the, the bylaw as it is right now, and I've made several written submissions, which you're aware of, um, it's, it's sort of a work in progress. It's not a bylaw, I think, that anybody would want to hang their hat on right at this minute. Um, without being accused of really not understanding the complexities of the issue. Um, bylaws are supposed to be guidelines. This one as laid out is punitive. It is um, basically um, discriminatory and it's, you know, it's, it attacks a group of people that have operated for years, even before this council in this town with these businesses. I was part of the... Um, group that met with um, your consultant Odette um, last year and Sue was in the meeting and I said, Sue, how many problems are there? She said, one house on Bay Street. There's no other problems at all. We've been operating an Airbnb for, this is our second year, um, zero problems. We have friends, zero problems. So, you know, again, lack of statistics there. Um, I think it would be a huge failure if this bylaw passed and one small business operator was forced out of business, quite simply because an inability to continue the dialogue, bring everybody together, um, this basically set up a working committee as previous councils have, where you have members of the community that get together. Most of us agree on a lot of the aspects, which are guidelines, contrast to the first bylaw reading, which was lock off suites and suites and duplexes, whereby the right approach is being taken and saying, here's the guidelines, trusting people to do it properly, and basically create an environment that everybody supports. Um, once again, this bylaw has not done that, and it will not do that. And um, as you can see with my written submissions, there's got some quite serious flaws there that I'm concerned about. Um, our BRB, we rent for longer than 30 days. So therefore, probably this does not apply to us. We also do less than 30 days. But from um, January to the end of April this year, we had two tenants. Um, I can share another statistic for you. On the Airbnb platform, you can see the number of people that are looking at your listing. In the last 10 days, there have been 1,300 people looking at our listing. Our listing is booked solid till the end of August. So that gives you an idea in this current environment with staycation, we've seen the nightmare with BC Ferries. We know people want to get out and you know the, we have somebody coming for two weeks this weekend that have been locked in their condo downtown and they just want to come to the fresh air and relax and have a holiday. And you know that this is not causing the community problems. Um, 
in our environment, in our neighborhood, I know there's at least four empty suites and houses right now that basically aren't even being rented. So there's zero impact and there's only two Airbnbs. So to say that the Airbnbs impact long-term rentals, again, there is no rules or laws forcing anybody to rent a house long-term. And it's, it's a, it's a, again, it's a business decision, the same as, uh, you know, hosted accommodation is a business decision. So um, it, it's really, uh, I, I don't think this bylaw is stand. If it's voted on and passed as it is, I think it's going to have way more serious repercussions across the board. And it would be just a huge pity to find that you have put 20 or 30 people out of business for no good reason, just through a lack of further communication. And, you know, it's a complex situation specific for this town. You can't use stats from downtown. You can't use stats from anywhere else. It's specific to this town. Um, so uh, yeah, for that reason, I'm sorry, it's Des Delaney, Wildwood, Crescent, Gibsons. I forgot to give name and address. Um, I'm opposed to this bylaw as it is right now. Um, it needs to be adjusted to reflect the realities of what is going on in the town instead of perception. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Delaney. And I'll just uh, correct one concept you have. Bylaws are not guidelines. Bylaws are, have to be enforceable, so they have to be very clear and uh, provide clear direction as opposed to being guidelines, which, uh, which would be much, um, much uh, less clear in that sense. Thank you. Next speaker. Deb Mowbray, welcome back. Hello. Yes. Uh, yeah, Deb Mowbray and I live at 557 North Fletcher. And uh, I'm gonna chime in um, as a resident and a realtor and as the chair of the Gibsons and District Chamber. Um, as far as the chamber goes, we haven't done any sort of official poll or anything of our, of our members as of late. We did in September of 2019. Um, and we did have a 72% response rate, uh, which we shared with the SCRD um, it, in, you know, a, wanting um, to allow um, short-term rentals without the owner on site. And, and again, they, that was when the two bedroom maximum, those were the two issues that we had specifically talked about. Um, and, you know, we kind of have people in the chamber, some either way, you know, some need, uh, need you know, definitely want to encourage the tourists to, to keep coming. And if short-term rentals is the way, then that's the way. Um, some have, you know, need, have employees that need affordable housing and have, have trouble, uh, you know, filling, filling those, those positions. So, um, you know, it, it, there, there are issues. Um, as far as a realtor goes, I would just like to see some consistency among the municipalities as far as what the bylaws are. Um, I know that that can't really be set in stone, but that's just something that would be nice that it wasn't so confusing as, you know, what the SCRD and District of Seashells and, and Town of Gibsons, um, if that was something that could be a little bit more cohesive. And, um, and as a resident, I actually live directly across the street from a vacation rental, so I can speak to that and that I get the people that, you know, are aggravated by it, for sure. Um, there, you know, there are issues, you know, yes, people are on the, the deck every day and partying and enjoying themselves, you know. Um, but at the same time, as just a regular person, when I like to go um, visit another community, I myself like to be you know, on my own with my family um, without somebody on site. So I can see, uh, you know, how that is important to people. And do I think that we're gonna lose, um, you know, all our tourists if, if this bylaw is solidified as it is? You know, it, it's hard to say, but I do see that, you know, it does fit. You know, when people come to the vacation rental across the street from me, you know, we're talking, you know, groups of families. So they wouldn't be able to do that. and. Um, and you know, you know that they're making good memories, and and so I would like to just see um, taxation. Like, why can't we commercially tax those those people that are using their property as solely a business? Um, you know, uh, you know, the business licensing fee to me seems 
low and I don't even think you could put that as high as maybe the tax could, and that way we can get the money kind of back into our community. Uh, not that I really know how that works, but that would just be my two bits on that. Like I'm, I'm for them uh, because I think that in communities, you know, it's it's um, it's kind of a win-win. But um, but uh, just again, trying to uh, um, yeah, just trying to make sure that that the money, as much money, can stay in the community as possible. So thank you. Thank you, Deb. And I just want to clarify, you're speaking both as a resident, are you speaking on behalf of the chamber? Yes, I am. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Uh, Mr. Mayor, at this time, the only hands that I see raised are ones who've already spoken. Okay, let's go back for that. We'll... Sorry, I just had, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor, I just had somebody raise their hand. Okay, thank you. Uh, I invite that person forward. Okay, I'm not seeing anybody yet. I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor, they seem to have left the meeting. Um, it was Silas White. So if I see him rejoin. Oh, no, oh. there he is there now. Yeah. Silas White, you're muted still. There we go. Yeah, sorry, that took a while to, to uh, get through. I just want to, um, I submitted a written submission. Um, so I'm not going to um, waste your time reading that out. Um, but I just want to uh, encourage um, that if not everyone has read the written submissions, I know I've been in your position before. Sometimes when the late position, um, submissions come in, um, it's important to make sure that there's there's time uh, for for everyone to catch up on those. Um, so uh, so I just want to encourage uh, encourage council to make the time to ensure all the written submissions are read. Thank you. And you are on South Fletcher Road. Four forty South Fletcher Road. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. White. At this time, Mr. Mayor, the only hands I see raised are ones who've already spoken in the first round. I invite uh, them to come forward and speak a second time. Anybody wishes to be, speak a second time. Now, now you have three minutes to speak a second time. Mr. Seeley. Hi there again, uh, Eric Seeley, 810 North Road. Um, as the voice here that's just in support of this bylaw, I just wanted to clarify that I do support um, short-term rentals. And I think that most people would agree that short-term rentals are inevitable and something that we can't really avoid. I think that the idea around this bylaw should um, focus primarily on the point that if you are going to run a legitimate business, you should run a legitimate business and that the rules should structure it so that you're running a legitimate business. And I understand um, the 100% of the time uh, sort of rule to, to mean more that there's a full-time residence on that property where a person lives. And that that doesn't necessarily mean that you're there 100% of the time. It means that you're available or that you can get somebody there who's available. And that we, as you know, one person said, it's 2020, you know, we have ways of doing these things electronically, of doing them Expediently, we have ways of avoiding one another, as we have now seen for the last few months, is <laughs> becoming a necessary part of the economy. So I do understand and support short-term rentals. I understand this to be to avoid people coming in from non-residents who are able to come here, who are able to buy property and run them like hotels from a distance, when we have uh, a housing availability crisis. when. This will drive up home prices when this allows things like this to happen. We have to be vigilant about these kinds of things and think about them on a local level and a balanced level. And I understand the backlash that that receives, but we, I think that it's important from a, from a broader stance. Thanks.
Hello? Hello? Mr. Mayor, uh, Manfred Schultz has just joined. Thank you very much. Thanks for uh, inviting me back. Um, I'll, I'll keep it short, less than three minutes. Um, the only other comments I, I had was um, the, well, one thing, party houses, uh, as I said, we, we've been in the business ourselves for many years in Vancouver, and um, we happen to have a rugby house beside us, and we're the ones who have to complain about the rugby house for, and, not, and not other and other neighbors complaining about where our rentals are. Uh, and and, and I think it's blown out of proportion. Uh, we live here on Skyline Drive and the, the house that was mentioned on Bay Street is a five bedroom, beautiful five bedroom house that uh, people have, um, they still own it. Uh, and, and there were larger groups that, that came in and they did make noise. We never heard it, we never saw it. Uh, we saw lots of people who were enjoying the waterfront um, and quite frankly, the whole party aspect, I think, is blown out of proportion. And, and somebody else asked, we should know those numbers. How many real complaints have there been uh, about that? The other, the, the other thing I want to mention is one dwelling unit uh, is allowed. Um, I don't think that that's workable for, yeah. obviously, if there's a family, they, they, they're going to come or a reunion and it's two families getting together. What are they supposed to do if, if one place can only allow two adults and a child in a room? Um, I, I, think, I think when, when a person has a larger place that, that they can have uh, numerous places, that should be allowed. Um, I, I don't, the, the, plus on an economic perspective, uh, we, in our bed and breakfast that we ran for, for almost 10 years, um, in Vancouver, they had a stipulation for two to three rooms that was allowable. And none of the people that, that had two rooms could make a go of it. And, and eventually what happens, uh, the, the, the general uh, consensus was that after three years, um, the people quit because it was too much work and, and, too, and, and not making any money at the thing. Um, so, you know, and there is an economic consideration. I think bylaw enforcement is, is a good thing. Um, however, uh, and I think that suggestion of, of, of every operator putting in some money, there's a fee in, included in the rental that then pays for uh, a, a bylaw person. Um, I, think that's, I think that's probably well, uh, well considering. Um, the other thing is when, when the rules are laid out clearly to residents, most people, and, and I certainly in, in our case, uh, I can count in, in, in 15, 20 years, I can count about uh, five incidents that weren't, weren't good. Mr. Schultz, your time is up for the oh, already. second speaking. Oh, thank you very thank much. You very thank, you. thank you very much. Uh, corporate officer, um, at uh, time now is... Uh, uh, 10 minutes to seven or nine minutes to seven. And I understand we have a list still of people to go through. Yes, I have still five people uh, wanting to speak. Okay, and that five people would represent 15 minutes, which would put us over time uh, and then just winding up. So um, at this point in time, I'm going to uh, recommend that council um, adjourn this public hearing and uh, adjourn it. Yes, uh, sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor, on your script, there is uh, the recognizing the, need. Recogni recognizing the need for additional information. And I will ask Council for a motion to recess this public hearing and reconvene on July 21st, 2020 at 5.30 p.m. in the Town of Gibson's Council Chambers. Um, and um, I guess also on Zoom, so that uh, by that. So, um, Council, what are your, your wishes on that? Um, can I get a motion to do that? Councilor Kroll? Councilor Deandrad seconded. Um, all in favor of recess at this time? Um, thank you. And uh, Councilor Lumley, I can't see you on my screen, but could you, um, I'm assuming my screen for some reason. Let me see if I can open this up here. Um, I raised my hand. Did you? There you go. Good. Yes, yes out there cutting trees down. Okay. 
Uh, thank you very much. And uh, then that uh, that is then we are recessed now on this public hearing until July 21st, 2020 at 5.30 p.m. Thank you very much. Thank you for all who participated and who attended and uh, you're welcome to come back. Thank you. And uh, Council, I will see you in a few minutes at the Council meeting. We are recessed. Thank you. <laughs>